What's up everybody, my name is Dwight and welcome back to GeForce Garage. In celebration of the ninth Star Wars movie, The Rise of Skywalker, we brought in Stefan and Katrin Ulrich of Random Designs to show us their incredible scratch build based off of the T-70 X-Wing. Well, welcome both of you to GeForce Garage. What did you bring us today? So today we brought our T-70 X-Wing case mod from the latest Star Wars movies. So it's obviously a huge mod. Uh, how'd you guys come up with the inspiration and like concept for something like this? We both are very big movie fans and we always wanted to build something inside the Star Wars universe. And we really like the new design of the T-70 X-Wing. So that's why we decided to actually build one for our own. The idea was not only to build it like as a prop, so it should look as it is in the movies, but to combine it with a fully functional PC. It had to have been pretty challenging. I mean, usually I ask people what mod they've done to a case, but you guys aren't working with a case here. So how'd you actually go about constructing and building this huge PC? For the Star Wars movies nowadays, they don't use any practical models at all for the spaceship. So all is done in 3D. So we watched the specific scenes over and over again. And then we found some pictures online of a side view and a top view. And then we started 3D modeling around those pictures and coming up with our own 3D model of the X-Wing. The difficulty was that we always wanted to combine like a prop and a computer. So mm -hmm. when you did the 3D model, it was not only about like modeling or remodeling what we've seen in the movies, but also incorporate the parts of the computer in a way that they look functional. Yeah, so after we were done with 3D modeling, we also thought, okay, how we can now bring this from 3D into the real life. And we used 3D printing. So we split it up the model in over 152 parts. And I think the printing process was about just two months of non-stop printing on two printers, actually. And then afterwards, actually our work started because then it was another two or even three months only of processing all the pieces, so sanding them, filling them, to get rid of all the layer lines, because at the end of the day, the whole X-Wing should not look as it is 3D printed, but it should look like made out of one piece. I noticed you guys have a lot of like LEDs in various places. How'd you go about doing those? The not obvious LEDs are actually in the back in the exhaust. There we have a small light effect that changes from red to yellow and then going into blue. So it should look like a starting engine. And all those LEDs are controlled with an Arduino. And also in the lasers we have blue LEDs which flash. It should look as they are shooting. In the cockpit there are several switches and different LEDs. And actually all of the switches control the water cooling, the temperature sensor and I think that's yeah, another Yeah, we have like other small switches yeah. that can change color from red to oh, blue yes. to give it like a little bit more detail. Gotcha. So what would you say was the hardest part in working with this? The first 3D model we made was a little bit small and then we put the hardware inside and realized, oh, it doesn't fit. So we had to elongate the body. Then, of course, we had to make the wings longer and bigger because everything should look like the original one from the movie so that when people look at it, they automatically think this is an X-Wing. What was also very challenging was the actual opening me mechanism of the wings. So you can close and open the wings mechanically. At the beginning we thought, okay, we have plenty of space in the body to realize the mechanism. But at the end of the day, if you have all the cables for the LEDs, it was so little space, so it was really tough to construct that. And one thing that was also challenging for us was the paint shop, because we try to resemble the color as it is in the original T-70 X-Wing. So everything is airbrushed. And after that, we applied a weathering to make it look like it has seen several battles before. So is there anything in this build for someone that's just looking at it for the first time may not notice that you kind of want to call attention to? Our BB-8 actually can move his head really like co-pilot in the X-Wing and this is controlled by a small stepper motor and Arduino. And then we have like small compartments throughout the X-Wing. For instance, at the front, we have hidden underneath the panel the water tank for the water cooling, which is illuminated with blue LEDs to make it look more like an engine. And then in the back, we have the graphics card. And for the graphics card, we choose the Jedi Order Titan XP because it has a very unique design and fitted our X-Wing totally perfect. We try to incorporate the hardware that everything should have a certain kind of purpose. And speaking of the hardware, what's the actual specs of the PC? For the motherboard, we used an MSI Z370i Gaming Pro AC motherboard. For the CPU, we used an Intel i9-9900K. 
Then we have 16 gigabytes of HyperX Savage memory, 240 gigabyte HyperX Savage SSD. The power supply is from Cooler Master, it's a V700. And then we have a custom made water cooling system that was supported by Alpha Cool. Well, you guys obviously put a ton of work in this. Do you guys have any other projects in the works? At the moment, we are planning on a Mac Warrior build. We are not sure yet about which Mac we actually build, but we are looking closely into the Mad Cat, of course. Nice. Thanks again for coming by. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Shortly after our interview, Stefan and Katrin won first place at the Cooler Master World Series in the Scratch Build category. So congratulations to both of them. If you guys like this video, let us know in the comments down below, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you for the next one.